Richard Curtis finds a baboon bone piece in South Africa in 2015. Two collaborators, Jesse Martin and Angeline Lees, rebuilt the fragment and 150 others from the site, revolutionizing our understanding of human evolution. The two million year old fossil revolutionized our ancestry. Hello everyone. In this video, we will unveil the tale of a two million year old fossil that has revolutionized our understanding of our human ancestors. But before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for regular updates. Let's get started. The Dremel Cave. Latrobe University scholars in Melbourne, Australia, excavated the Dremel system in South Africa, one of the world's most important archaeological sites for deep time human antecedents. Due to erosion, UNESCO declared the Dremel on Caverns a world historic site in 1999. They were called the Cradle of Humanity. In 1992, South African paleontologist Andrew Kaiser discovered the site. Homo sapiens indeed, this South African area has provided some amazing fossils, including a 1994 human evolution find. Kaiser recovered two Paranthropus robustus skulls that year. Since Paranthropus went extinct 6,600,000 years ago, contemporary humans are the sole hominid species. According to Johannesburg's Witwatersrand University's Liebberger, Paranthropus were more like kissing cousins than direct forebears. Eurydice's fragmentary skull and teeth were recovered at Dremelon 1.5 to 2 million years ago. Discovery In 2000, Kaiser informed the South African Daily, The Mail and Guardian, that in 1994, one of his amateurs noticed something unusual. Kaiser continued, I took over immediately and brushed the soft soil carefully from around it. And there was the outline of a beautiful skull, and its mandible, perfectly preserved. Not far from the skull, we found an enormous lower jaw with huge teeth that was Orpheus the male and the paleontologist. Kaiser told the New York Times in 2000 that they competed with our oldest ancestors, including Homo sapiens. In April 2020, paleontologist Andy Harris stated that Homo erectus was the first species of our genus. Homo erectus has been found in Spain and Java, Indonesia, but the latter exclusively in Africa. Neanderthals and humans descend from Africans. The earliest humans, Homo erectus, had longer legs than torsos. Our ape-like ancestors abandoned trees and lived on the ground, becoming the first animal to walk upright, scientists say. Running and hunting were easier with long limbs. Homo erectus had a larger brain. Homo erectus became human-like as its brain grew. Homo erectus was the first species to master fire, make stone tools, and organize hunting and gathering. It's unclear if these ancient humans spoke or made art. We know that the species lived longer than we imagined. Javaman, the earliest remains of Homo erectus, were found in the early 1890s on Java, not in Africa as expected. The discovery of the top of a skull, a femur, and a tooth of a Homo erectus fossil by Frenchman Eugene Du Bois sparked years of debate. Du Bois thought he had a transitional species for ape demand, but others disagreed. The team we met earlier that was excavating at the South African Dremelin site was an international operation with participants from South Africa's Latrobe University and Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. On his first dig, Richard Curtis, a graduate student at Latrobe, found a small bone fragment buried in the ground. She told the New York Times in April 2020 that these exquisite crania started sprouting out, and she wanted to investigate these strange bone bits. Baker manipulated two bone fragments in a secluded corner as the Dremelon researchers attended a seminar one evening. The components come together like a three-dimensional puzzle. Baker immediately realized that she had bones, not from Ababoon, but from Mohammedan in her hands, but from which ancient human species did the skull fragments come from? That was far from clear. So two other researchers from Latrobe took over the investigation of the bone pieces. Jesse Martin and Angeline Lees had the tricky task of trying to make some structural sense of the 150 or so bone fragments, 
But first, they had to clean them up in an article. He added that bone shards have to be gently removed from hard substances. Martin combines bone pieces. He and his wife, Liz, had to be quite disciplined when piecing. The fragile fragments had to spend long periods not talking or breathing because the slightest perturbation may have interrupted the difficult bone rebuilding process. Martin claims he's well suited to this position because a childhood accident left him without feeling in his left arm, allowing him to keep it still while describing their work. I told the NYT that I panic every time. We're a couple that's clearly comfortable with awkward silences. Martin said, as DN-8134 was named, and the skull's shape became plain. According to an April 2020 University of Johannesburg news story, the skull contained a bone crest, indicating that it was a Homo erectus. Baker discussed Homo erectus's conformation. The results. Although short-lived, its teardrop shape and big brain cavity suggested Homo erectus. The skull's age was more important than Martin's supposition that the skull's owner had died at age three. The specimen's age startled the experts, who used high-tech methods. 1.95 to 2 million-year-old DNH-134 is the oldest Homo erectus skull found. The oldest was found at Menasi, Georgia, on the European-Asian border. The specimen was 1.8 million years old, 150,000 to 200,000 years younger than the Dremlin. The method used to date DHN-134 also dated cave material. Baker remarked that we combined dates from multiple sources and produced a very accurate age. The 1994 Paranthropus robustus specimens are the same age as the Homo erectus cranium, since the Dronalon major quarry and associated fossils are dated from 2.04 to 1.95 million years ago. Additionally, the two archaic hominid species lived in the same environment. Australopithecus, which lived in southern Africa from 4 million to 1.9 million years ago, was one of three ancient human species. Homo sapiens developed from Homo erectus, making it a significant species. Next up, according to The Guardian in April 2020, Kremlin appears to be the cradle of humanity and our direct ancestor, at least until the next shocking fossil find. Professor Andy Harris, who led the team that discovered the 134, said it's fascinating because human evolution is the story of us. And when we go back this far with a discovery like this, it's the story of everyone on Earth. This too, or three-year-old may have belonged to Homo erectus, who lived on Earth for two million years. That's it for today. What do you think about this incredible discovery? Let us know in the comment section. Please like and share our videos. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for regular updates.